we're here for another special edition of the Everyman Podcast. It is a super pod with my super bros. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, re- returning to the Everyman Podcast for an unprecedented third time. Yeah. Second time in, in, in three weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Holcomb from Periphery. Mm, mm, Greetings, everybody. Mm. Thanks How for having you? me back. Third time. Can't believe it. Un- Love it. Unprecedented. And you know what, man? We're happy to have you. And we were just kind of chit-chatting before we we got going here and I mentioned that this is the first Super Bowl that Daryl, since I've known Daryl, that he's not actually at. And we were kind of talking about, you know, the experience in the Super Bowl. And you said, you know, are you jaded by it? So, Daryl, are you, how, how do you feel not being at the Super Bowl this year? What's Dude, question, it, well, as a guy who, you know, who played in the league and now you, you, you're involved in the league still, what does the Super Bowl mean for you? Well, for me, I mean, it's 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 the culmination of everybody's efforts into I mean, like I always wished I could have played in the Super Bowl. Right. So but that didn't happen. But but now I get to go like every year just to experience it. Um, yeah, I, I work the Super Bowl, but as a fan, except for this year, but COVID and keeping numbers down, that's the reason why I'm not there, which totally sucks. I'm, so another reason why I, I, I want to throw COVID out of the window. But um, at the end of the day, it's it's just one of those things where you get to one, which is cool for me, is I get to 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 see coaches or I see players that I, I used to play with that are now coaches or they're, they're television personalities. And so it's it's almost kind of like, you know, just a walk down memory lane. You know what I mean? You just talk about, you know, things you talked about when you're in the locker room, but you're just there in that Super Bowl environment. But then also you just you, you get to be, you know, in that ambiance and just you see all the fans and you see how, how much, you know, people love, you know, uh, just that the best versus the best. And it's, it's just setting the stage for that. And it's, there's something just larger than life about the Super Bowl. And I'm all about the little things, you know what I mean? I'm all about, you know, players bringing their kids out there on the field and just taking pictures and selfies and just being in that, you know, that the bliss of that and just taking in every moment because they don't want to forget it, you know, whether win, lose or draw, like, to me, it's it's just awesome. So, like, you know, most people, at, at, you know, NFL films that have gone for decades straight, they're just kind of like, ah, fuck, this is another Super Bowl. It's, we hurry up, go home and get back and whatever. But me, mm-mm. Like since the very first one 10 years ago to now, I'm just bummed that I can't be there. But, like, I still kind of relish, you know, all the other years. Uh, and I still get excited and jacked up about it because I know, you know, what that environment's going to be like and and how special it is. And you, you, you got to you got to cherish that. Do you, do you have a standout year for over because you said you've been to everyone over the past decade? Mm-hmm. Is there one sort of like, oh, that was special or this moment? The, the, the couple of years ago when Tom won his sixth, you know what I mean? And the reason that one was really special is because every year I go to, you know, I work with uh, Disney and we get the, hey, you know, I'm going to Disney World shot with whomever the MVP is or whoever it is that Disney wants to be a part of that that spot. And this particular year, like everything that could have gone wrong at the end of that game went wrong, like safe workers tossed to the side, news news uh, outlets charging the field because they wanted to get around Tom. And then like, I had to like kind of wake up the echoes and like charge through 200 people just to make sure that I had three cameramen. One was on my back. Another one was like underneath my arm. So we get this shot, you know, of him saying, Hey, I want to go to Disney world. I mean, I, people got trampled. Like there was a guy who was, who had his hand held and he would, he just got like walked on. There was a, there, there was a, there was another moment. And, you know, I'm going to say it because it was, pretty kind of awesome but also I kind of felt bad about it. it was like this this one, one of the one of the I don't know news anchors or whatever like she was just like in between my arm and so like my hand was like across her chest and I didn't want it to be there but there's like 200 people just like I'm like I'm sorry you gotta go and I'm just like and she just kind of gets kind of just clothesline backwards into just this like just mob of people and she just disappeared. I don't know what happened to her. I don't know where she went. I don't know what, and it was like, and it was just like, and it was crazy because like I, I coach uh, defensive line um, out here in, in, in New Jersey in New Egypt Township High School and all of my guys like sent me texts and like, they're like, coach, we're seeing you on feet. You closed line somebody that was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> just I'm just like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. And it's like, but it was like, it was just pure pandemonium and it sticks out because I had a, um, uh, samurai shampoo anime shirt. I loved it. 
And when I got onto the field, it was intact. When I left, my armpit was ripped out. The ring around the actual shirt was torn to the back. And you could see the wife beater underneath. There was like a hole in the middle of my chest. And But all for the all for the love of production and to get the shot. You, you got to do what you got to do, right? You got to get the shot. Yeah, because because literally it was like Disney like changed their mind like three different times. They didn't know if they wanted a single with Tom or if they wanted welcome, if they wanted somebody else. Then they wanted them both together. So, so when we got when we got Welker by himself, we thought we were done. And so then the mob goes toward Tom. We're on the outside of it. And then, and they're like, no, we want Welker and we want Tom together. And I'm just like, how am I going to get? And then, like, I remember one of the guys in the truck was like, I don't know how you're going to fucking do it. But you got to get Tom over here for this shot. And I literally ran like 30 yards and plowed into like a billion people to get to the middle, which is that picture you showed. I'm like, literally, I'm going on the inside of the so, And I remember because there was a guy with like some purple suit that was like interviewing him. And I'm humping Tom's like fucking ass. (laughs) <laughs> toward toward our crew so everywhere the everywhere he was going the circle moved that was just my my thought process so i'm on the other side basically just fucking hopping humping tom brady and he's just like what are you doing i'm like dude you gotta get this fucking shot i gotta get you over there so like and then eventually once he got to our team it just parted and i was able to go on the other side and then we got what we needed it's crazy it's like it's like I'm a mythical bear at NFL films when I tell this story. It's crazy because that's, that's what actually happened. And they got footage of it, too. It's crazy. There are a few things I would like in life less than to be <laughs> trampled by you. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. You're right. Right. It's nuts. Hey, you'll see, man. Once we, once you guys are back on the road and you guys, uh, we all link up. When Daryl wants to give you a ride, you're going. <laughs> you <know? laughs> there's, there's no... Uh, you know, there's no stopping that train. <laughs> yeah, it's just all fun, man. All love too. Love it. Yeah, you know, it, you know, Mark. When he describes it, it just it sounds like uh, football name. Football name, yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah. Everybody from the business all in one spot. People you don't yeah. see, you know, but maybe once or twice a year, and you know, everybody it, kind of celebrating the best. Except, of what it is. except the shine definitely wore off on Nam for me and pretty much 90% of music industry people that I know who have been doing it every year. It's, it, it wore off a long time ago. I, I just think that there's something inherently different and that's the glory. There's so mm. much glory and lore and, yeah. and, and kids stuff. like you mentioned Disney. It's, it's totally Disney, like on brand oh, yeah. Disney, man. Like you grew up with the, where you want to go, you know, like, uh, where, where are you going to go now that you want a Super Bowl? I'm going to Disney. Like, that's that's kid stuff. The Super Bowl is all Dude. childhood dream yeah. lore, man. Everybody feels like they're 12 years old when they watch the Super Bowl. Well, I'll tell you one thing about that, which what really gets you, though, is because I love... Dude, I, if I had my keys right here, I'll show you. I got, like, a keychain with Mickey Mouse on them. And, like, I love Mickey Mouse. So, like, to actually meet him in person... And then to like know that you tower over Mickey Mouse and you like, you want to, you want to, you like, you feel like a kid. You're like, I just want him to be huge and just kind of hold me. And then we took the picture together. And there was a couple of times I was like, I'll get on my knees just so this like looks better, but it doesn't. Don't ever, don't ever get on your knees next to Mickey Mouse. It's not good. (laughs) Yeah. In many, many ways. You know, the Super Bowl brings us together. Um, It is even as a fan who's never, you know, been a part of it at that level, there's like a special mythology to like the, the weekend and, Oh, what are you going to cook? What are you going to eat? What are you going to get a big TV? Like all that stuff. And, and in, in past years, obviously, you know, your family and friends get together and this year it's not, it's largely not going to be like that for a lot of people. Um, but it's, it's super nonetheless. So, you know, let's just jump into it and a quick recap, not to toot my own horn here, but, I was the lone Tampa supporter uh, last time we met. And um, I don't think the game, I don't think the whole Tampa Green Bay thing turned out the way everybody thought. Kind of a controversial couple decisions there by the coach, but that is in the past now. So we find ourselves with the Chiefs in Kansas City and the Buccaneers of Tampa Bay, Super Bowl 55. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of storylines going into it, a lot of exciting stuff outside of it. First thing that kind of caught my attention to the oldest two coaches head to head and Bruce Arians is 68 and Andy Reid's only 62. I, I, if I had to bet on who was older, I would have thought it was Andy Reid for sure. But, uh, 
my man Bruce Arians, he's he's holding it down with his cool hat and his glasses. You can that really Kangol, tell. man. Yeah. <laughs> Got the Kangol hat. The Kangol right. does it, man. You, yeah. you can't, you can't, you can't be old with that. You, you can always be young and hip. Takes, yeah, it takes thirty years off you. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, you, see, you can pass for thirty-eight. Um, so, you know, from a coaching perspective, who who do you guys give the edge to? I was, I was wrong, man. Like, so okay. First of all, you said you said that you were the only Tampa Bay supporter last time we did this. I was rooting for Tampa Bay big time because of my Packers, bias. right? I should yeah. I should clarify so, not that yeah. it was a support thing but a maybe a projection a, yeah yeah Proje- a, a projection I was wrong and I was very wrong about picking Lafleur over Arians in that battle because I, I I said that I trusted him more and that, that late game scenario that you just referenced would couldn't have been a clearer example of like wow. <laughs> I was thinking about that when I was watching it. I was like oh so was I <laughs> yeah so was I. <laughs> I was like man and you know it's one of those things where. The guy LaFleur looks like a genius if it works out and it didn't work out. And now he's a scapegoat and everybody wants to question him. But we've all seen it work out a million times, you know, where where, where it works. And the guy's like, well, I I trust my defense and I trust that they get a stop. We get the ball back and we can score a touchdown and win uh, in in that late game uh, scenario against Tampa Bay. It didn't work out. Um, And yeah, I mean, I got to give Bruce Arians credit, man. Like, I I don't think I, I... I was as effusive towards him as I should have been when we talked last time, but uh, I, I still got to go Andy Reid all the way, man. Like I, I just think he's got, yeah. he's got his quarterback yeah. that he's always wanted. You know, he's never had a Mahomes level talent uh, as otherworldly as he is. And I just, I think in terms of coaching matchups, I think Andy Reid's got it by a long shot. Yeah. Huge. I, I just, I, well, you got to think too, this is this is Arians trying to get his first Super Bowl ring as a head coach. So I mean, like he's not really familiar with that environment. Andy Reid's been there, you know, multiple times. He's he's got a ring as as a head coach. He's trying to do something that hasn't been done in 17 years to repeat like that back with the same team. So it's just like I got to go with Andy. He's a players coach too. I love players coaches, so I got to give it up to him. Yeah, it's, players love him, don't they? Yeah. Which is which is funny. You would think like. Uh... What is this large, jolly fellow? How how could he possibly relate to uh, you know the modern day a twenty one year old professional athlete? And they love playing for him. It's 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 amazing. And I think it's partially like he's got he's just got this certain charisma to him, and he's always had that. And and you know, growing up in the the Philadelphia area, I'm a, I'm a Steelers fan because uh, my family's from Pittsburgh, and you're kind of born into that. But I always used to like I, I never understood why he got the level of shit he got when he was in Philadelphia, because like he just basically won, cons- he won consistently, and did the most with the least for a long time, and all he got was like he basically got run out of the, the city, you know. And yeah. I just I remember saying to my friends like, dude, he's gonna go anywhere and be treated like a king, and then win, and he did like he did he found a, like a nice midwestern city that support you know supported the team had a had a historic franchise and he, he's got a job for life there it's it's unfortunate it's like it's the same principle behind okay think about how many great quarterbacks and great nfl players haven't won a super bowl because of tom brady and bill belichick you know <laughs> right or, Matt Ryan. or how, yeah how many great players <laughs> nba players in the 90s didn't win a title because of Michael Jordan and the Bulls, you know, the oh list goes God, on and on. Man. Yeah. And, and it's unfair to Andy Reid that, yeah, like you were saying, he was the scapegoat for all those years and he got ran out of town in Philadelphia. I, you know, it's hard to attribute any of that to him because he always had great teams. I mean, even when they weren't great, he was never, you know, the coach of, of an embarrassingly bad football team. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were just kind of guilty of existing at the same time as this, you know, unfuckwithable dynasty <laughs> that the Patriots were for uh, for two decades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And another thing, too, is just kind of how active and Andy Reid is in the community, too. So you think a guy who's not only trusted by the players, but is kind of beloved by the community. And, you know, you got your Fairweather fans. You know, you got the ones that are like uh, up when you're up and down when you're down. But um, at, at the core of it all, between both Andy Reid and, you know, Bruce Arians, they, they actively give back to the community, which is awesome, no matter where they are. Yeah, universally liked, and and like I, I 
I don't like it. I, I'm, I'm the kind of sports fan when, where if a team wins a title, I'm actively rooting against them repeating just because I like to see parity. I like to see a little bit more equality, success sort of spread evenly around the league. If there had to be a team and a coach who was going to go back to back or hell, maybe even win three or four, who knows? This is a really good team that doesn't look like they're going to get worse anytime soon. Mm. I, Andy Reid is that guy. Like he's he's yeah. just a likable guy. Yeah. Like you said, Justin, yeah. he's got that sort of like jolly, uh, you know, root root for kind of guy look. You want to root for that guy, dude. Like think about this. Like the one thing I loved about this season, like the whole COVID thing. The best thing about COVID and football <laughs> is Andy Reid coming like st- beginning of the season with like a goalie face mask basically over his face. All and I looked up. Dude, we got this like bite where like Travis Kelsey was just like, look at this guy. He's so intense and he's breathing and he's fogging up the <laughs> steady ass. It's so awesome, man. I remember like week three, they're like, Andy Reid has a new anti fogging face shield. And I'm like, what a fucking headline, you know? <laughs> you know, this is like, this is a sport of gladiators and savages. And we're talking about this is his foggy face. Dude, dude, anytime somebody goes in their face mask to clear it so they can yeah. look at the call sheet, that's it's just amazing. Epic. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I put I put that game on and I was like, how is he even watching this game right now? I'm I'm watching more of this game yeah. than he is, and I'm switching away to watch uh, you know, to watch other sports from time to time. And yeah. <laughs> and you know it's gotta be like it's prime time. Everyone's watching. There's like 15 million people watching. You know you look like a dick, you know, like every, like it's just and you and you gotta like focus power through it. You can't be like you know, like there is no it's it's uh yeah, he's yeah. he's the man. And also I think about Andy Reid is like he kind of represents to me that throwback NFL coach because now you got all these young like jacked handsome dudes with fancy haircuts, you know, that are like got their pencil and they're they're doing math. You could just say Sean McVay, just say Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. Like Sean McVay, <laughs> any of these guys, you know. And um <laughs> it's like this new t- type of thing, but that's what like people like about Rex Ryan, I think, you know, he's one of those guys too. Um, but it's just like a, it's like a throwback. He, he just reminds me of, you know, makes me think of old, uh, you know, my first, this first Super Bowl I can remember, we're talking about Super Bowl memories was, you know, Green Bay winning, you know, with, with Favre and like, you know, Andy Reid being there, yeah. quarterback coach and yeah, all that, all that, uh, that family tree there. But, um, you know, head coach is, is nothing without his quarterback, of course. Hmm. And, I have gone, I've come full circle with Tom Brady in that as a Steelers fan, he is responsible for many heartaches. I was once caught in the Denver airport, actually coming home from Nam during an ice storm for seven extra, like seven hours in the middle of the night. And my gate was next to a gate flying back to Boston. And it was the AFC championship game, Steelers and Patriots. Mm. And I got to watch the Steelers just get totally routed with a bar full of laid over Boston sports fans. That Ooh. is, a, that is a circle of hell. Ugh. I wish upon no one. Ugh. Oh man. Ugh. With their Sorry. New England accents, just, you just like, they sound like the, Oh God, and everybody oh. Punk jerseys and it was just, and then like, then on top of that, you, the, tra- the trash can start overflowing and the bath- bathrooms were fucked up and it was just like the worst yeah. Denver international, not, not a big fan surrounded, but you were surrounded. <laughs> I was surrounded. But so I, I've gone from there to like, well, this guy is clearly the best to ever play the position. And I'm lucky enough to be conscious during it. You know, this is his 10th Super Bowl appearance. This would be his seventh ring if he wins it. First guy to take two different teams to the Super Bowl after age 40, which that alone is fucking insane. Yeah, it's nuts. I don't know how. And like right now, for all you gambling, every man and every woman out there, Tampa Bay is, is plus three on the spread. And it's like, I look at, I look at that and I'm just thinking, this is, this is the best at his best. And you're giving him points. Tom Brady, how do you have a better quarterback there? Then you have Patrick Mahomes, you know, and you got these two Titans and it's like Tom Brady has the last time he lost the game was to Patrick Mahomes. The only person to beat Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs is Tom Brady. It's like the, unstoppable force and the immovable object hulk hogan versus andre the giant it's like mm-hmm. the story is beautiful oh and, yeah and it's and it's so exciting so what mark where are you at on the quarterback standpoint here 
Well, yeah. To, to piggyback off what you're saying, look at Tom Brady's supporting cast two years ago. And now look at his supporting cast. It's night and day. I mean, he didn't have very many real, like at the, at least at the skill positions, elite players. Not and least. you look at just his receiving core. You got like Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and, and, and Cameron Braid at tight end. Oh yeah, and Antonio Ross. Brown. Yep, yep. I mean, I didn't even <laughs> mention AB. Is yeah. he going to play, by the way? I'm sure he will. Yeah. I, I would be shocked if he didn't. They're going right. to find a way. And you know what? Again, yeah. I've gone full circle with AB. I'm I'm pulling for him. I hope I hope he gets a ring. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see, man. But like whether he plays or not, that supporting cast is is kind of ridiculous compared yeah. to what he had two years ago. If you're just looking at, you know, A being those two teams. Um, with that being said, I, I, I still have to give to give the the edge to the baby goat, Pat Mahomes. Just yeah, dude. just cause you know. Every big matchup he's had over the past couple of years, it's like, oh, him versus Aaron Rodgers, him versus whoever. Every highly touted and highly anticipated matchup he has against another elite level team or defense or quarterback in prime time, he delivers. Yeah. It's sort of like the on Lamar Jackson, you, you know, uh, and it's shocking he, how clutch he is. It's oh. shocking, especially at, at his age. And I, it's really hard for me to pick. I, I, I feel very torn about this, as, as you can hear, but uh, I got to give the edge to Mahomes. But it's just with, with Brady demonstrating time and time again that he has this ability to 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 get his flask out and get the fountain of youth and pour a little bit yeah. in the flask, you know, mm -hmm. and, and hit it straight to the head. I, I can't sit here and say that, oh, Mahomes is going to make Tom Brady look like an amateur because that's not going to happen. If you look at their week 12 game. Oh yeah. I mean, what I think Brady had a pick or two in that game. I think he threw two yeah. picks. Yeah. Yeah. Two. You know, on the, the interception thing with Brady, the, I, again, I, I forget the exact stat, but every quarterback that's played in the Bruce Arians offense, the first year has had their highest interception rate by like 10. Yeah. Every single time, like, Roethlisberger, Peyton Manning, uh, Jameis, Jameis. Yeah. That's the reason Jameis Winston. Winston, is yeah. Winston, Winston. Uh, he's a special breed, but um, yeah. with interceptions. But I mean, everyone has thrown a lot of picks, so it's like that's kind of the name of that game. Yeah. What yeah, what yeah. the offense they're running there? So yeah. And he got yeah. a little unlucky in the in the in the conference game against Green Bay. Like I, I yeah. one of them was tipped. Yep. Right. Uh, right. 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 And it's it's hard to really knock Brady for that, but. Uh, He's still throwing deep. He's still taking chances, and and he seems to really trust some guys on the, on that offense. You know, you think a, a team with Brady and Gronk on it, he's going to be looking at Gronk every other down. Yep. But uh, like the, the amount of faith he has in some of his guys in in, in Cameron Brait in particular. Well, Cameron uh, Brait is like really turned on for him late, mm -hmm. and he kind of fits that mold of like unknown player that he develops that like the Tom Brady's going to develop a connection with from a mm -hmm. you know down the non bcs school like he, he always finds these guys that are just well i guess it's not him finding it but you know what i mean like he develops a rapport with these and i think part of it maybe is like he was like an overlooked guy and i think right. he i think he looks for talent that has that gene right. Right, you know right, right. which is why he's able to kind of bring the most out of some right. of these players I think for the for quarterbacks, I think it's gonna there's gonna be some fireworks. I'm hoping for that. I, I'm yeah. not I'm not hoping for a you know a Rams Patriots kind of repeat. You know, like yeah. I, I don't want to. I don't think we're gonna get like a ten to three final score. I hope we don't. I hope we don't, <laughs> hope we don't either. Have one of those. No, but as as someone who follows football and and sort of likes to think of myself as like a like a, a thinker as well when it comes to the games, like I I think it's gonna be a shootout. I'm, I'm looking at what's what what teams are playing right now and the, and the pieces in place and the weapons each team has at their disposal. I don't see this being a defensive game. Yeah. Well, I, I tell you what it's in that, that game against green Bay. And again, I know we're both, you know, kind of one for two in this whole thing, but the one thing we did, we did have in our favor was saying, Hey, listen, you know, Aaron Rodgers was playing out of his mind. Now he was, he was kind of sifted into that offensive line, just kind of going through things like butter as pressure came. But listen, anytime you have Shaquille Barrett and yeah. J one arm pirate himself, JPB, mm -hmm. get two sacks, Shaquille Barrett gets three, 
And all of those sacks, virtually all of them came in critical third down situations. It's just a recipe for disaster. It just is like yeah. no matter no matter if no matter if the, not, no matter if your quarterback's throwing interceptions or not, like it's just a recipe for disaster, and that's pretty much what happened. So, like for me, and you know, I think we talked about this, you know, the other day, brother Jay. Like, you know, there's going to be some young boys mm-hmm. at tackle for uh, for Kansas City, and let me let me let me tell you this. Early in that Week 12 game, they didn't have an answer for Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey. Early in the game, they didn't have an answer for him. That's why they ran it up. But if you look at that final score, 27 to 24, Mr. Brady was Mr. Brady as that game went on. So, like, that's the thing is, like, they don't, I think you can kind of chalk Tyreek Hill up for 160 yards right now. They know they're not going to be able to stop that. And the thing is, is if they can get him on the ground enough times where they can, get the ball back like you're saying it's it's you're then you're dealing with the goat and yeah it's like do you really want to give this guy a chance to win it with any amount of time on the clock like the amount of game the, the times i've seen him win a game with 42 seconds left or like, you're thinking oh they scored a touchdown they're up three ah, 22 seconds isn't enough you know and it's like it is every time it's just Bro. he's got He's blessed and highly favored, as we say here on the Everyman Podcast. My instant <laughs> highlight film was ruined because of Tom fucking Brady. <laughs> it, it was it was absolutely ruined. Seventy five minutes. I'm sitting up here uh, like, dude, they are fucking Atlanta's destroying them. It's gonna be it's over. I, and I dropped it just so you. I, let me let me preface this. I have been on the instant highlight project probably every year. I've been in NFL films, and there was a point where I went and I my I dropped the instant highlight five years straight. Like it never, like three or four weeks of my life, I can't get back. And this particular time, I was like, this is, this is the one. This is the one time I'm going to get it. And that motherfucker came all the way back and beat them. And I was, I was in that particular game. I remember I left the game and I went to my hotel and I fucking almost cried that night, man. I was just like, I cannot believe this. It, this happened again. It was, just, it was so bad, man. So bad. That 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 Super Bowl, uh, my band and I, we were on tour in Australia, and we were in the airport because it was the morning where we were. You, you know, it, it was uh, it, it was early in the day where we were across the world. We were watching the first half, and what, what was this? Was it twenty seven to three? Was that the lead? Dude, they were smashing. Not, yeah, I think it was like twenty one to three or twenty seven. Twenty one to three. That's what it was, right? And at, the Falcons had just got that last touchdown. And we were getting on the plane. We were like, oh, my God, the Falcons are about to beat the Patriots. Crazy. So we get on the plane. None of us have any service, of course. And then we land an hour, an hour and a half, two hours later or something. And all the Americans on the flight are just, even the Australians just pulling up their phones and, and like in Australian accents be like, look what he did. I can't do the Australian accent. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like geeking out over the final score and we were just like what the fuck man like and i think that was the moment where it's like everybody knew he was great everybody knew he was the best of all time but that was like a cartoonish moment yeah like, like dude what are, was, are you serious it's like time stood still man i i i can't even i ate so many fucking like I, I remember, like, I just How many I pulled everything. Dudes did you drink, bro? I, you know, the little like bar in the fucking room with like the candy and all that shit. I just took all that shit and I just like ate it all night. I was like, mother, can me. you imagine, oh, rah, rah, Mark? Can you rah. imagine the damage Daryl could do to a no. hotel mini bar, uh, yeah, snack bar I, thing? Yeah. Dude, I woke up with like fucking Milky Way crumbs in my <laughs> neck, like right in the fat fold of my neck. I was so stressed out eating, man. It was nuts, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Bro, the first time he came over came over our house for dinner, he ate fourteen tacos. Whoa! Yeah, my fiance Whoa. was like, "Wow, I, that's a lot of." Uh, yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't shy. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was a good time. World um, class. world world class. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just Tom Brady. It's hard to it's hard to like consciously root like not root but pick against him, knowing right. it's like right my everything in my brain is telling me like yeah but young buck over here you know andy reed tyree kill all this stuff but it's like yeah but it's tom brady and he does this and every time you count him out he comes and fucks you and i just i feel like there's not a there's not a bone in his body that is willing to like concede 
like the, the his status is number one or like he that is a guy who wants to win and he has no reason to play the game no financial incentive there's no nothing he could he could have walked away from the game three years ago and still probably been the best ever you know yeah. five yeah. years ago even oh yeah he's you know he's there to win and like that motivation and that drive that he has and and all the other components then and we haven't even touched on the fact that like somehow tampa's playing the super bowl in tampa bay oh yeah in their home stadium at and home like, you cannot discount the knowledge of the turf like that's a big thing and right now they're calling it's like 50 percent chance of rain so like mm-hmm. if it starts raining, that's their turf. They know they know that that climate. They they have a feel for it. You know, yeah. um, there's all those little things. Just the idea of like being in your own locker room, sleeping in like probably your own. Well, they're probably in the hotels, but you know, like all the things they always talk about. And a lot of that's different now with with COVID. But the distractions they talk about with the Super Bowl. We had Super Bowl champion uh, Ryan Harris on the show, and. Um, there's just people coming at you for from everything now it's just like only the the game there's no other shit to do there's no uh 30 family members you've never heard from before asking for tickets you know i think that is only going to enhance the the tom brady x factor in my mind yeah yeah you know? i didn't even and think could... about the rain forecast thing i i i, I do got to say if if this game has rain in it and the passing games, the, the passing game becomes less of an option because of poor weather. I kind of do trust the Tampa Bay running game over the, over the Kansas city running game. Let, Leonard Fournette's been playing pretty good. Uh, and I, I think the advantage in my mind goes to Tampa Bay. If the passing game becomes a little bit limited because of the weather, I didn't even think about that. And that's, that's Daryl and I were talking about this. There's only two, this is mind boggling here alone. There's only two running backs that have had a better postseason statistically, you know, run than what Fournette's doing right now. And nobody's even really like talking about yeah. how good he is. And it's like, it's Emmett Smith and Marcus Allen, uh, you know, and he's, he's just pounding the ball. He's like bending the defense to his will. And like, that's how you, you know, I'm told that's how you win football games. Um, but that's Kansas city doesn't have, they haven't had that consistent running game all year. And like, even though they got Levy on bell, he hasn't really done Levy on stuff since he's well, been there. Just check the tape. I mean, even in week, in week 12, you know, Kansas city's running game was non-existent. The, Tampa had an answer. Tampa's defense had an answer for the running game. They, they, they made them one dimensional. It's just that, you know, they got the best of them early on. So like, if they can put it all together, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long day. Yeah. Now, you know, they, you know, Kansas City still has weapons. They still have Kelsey. They still have Tyreek Hill. They still have, you know, the Honey Badger and, and, and Matthew and all that on the other side of the ball, too. And their defensive line is pretty stout as well. But, I mean, at the end of the day, like, if, if it's, it's – I feel like this is – it's the same way for both of these two. If you can get to Brady consistently, you got, you got more than a shot. Um, but it's – it's it, I don't know if a team has really gotten to Patrick Mahomes consist, consistently all year – but if 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 you do, mm, yeah, I don't know. I I think I think Tampa Bay is a real shot if they can limit the big plays in this one. And and if you look at that Week Twelve game, you know a lot of these they're just these big chunk plays where Tyreek Hill will catch a ball and then somebody will miss a tackle or two and then and then he'll just he'll just sprint. It's tack on an extra 25, 30 yards. Yeah, if they can limit that kind of stuff and play, I. You know, if I'm the defensive coordinator of Tampa Bay, I'm thinking conservative. I try my best to get to Brady, or sorry, try my best to get to Mahomes, but also play a conservative type of defense where I'm hanging back and just let them dink and duck, let them get their their small plays and hope, even though he doesn't have a track record of making mistakes, hope that there's some kind of mistake made along the way. Anything to surrender, to not surrender these big sort of Mahomes magic kind of plays, you know, where, where he's, where he's throwing 45, 50 yard passes or catching Tyreek Hill in open space and letting him do his thing. It's uh, it's about not missing these tackles. That That's what I'm saying. Sort of hang back and, and, and stay on the heels of your feet and not let these guys. And um, don't break. I yeah. agree wholeheartedly, Mark. You cannot like they did in the beginning of that game, 
play fucking Tyreek Hill press man. No. You fuck yourself every time. Excuse my language, guys. Every man faithful, but you fuck yourself every time. You cannot play that. He's not human. He's all like V12, no breaks. Like it's, His Instagram that's, that's, is just is cheetah. I love it's it. It's like, yeah. dude, like it's 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 ridiculous. It's it's like and it didn't take him long to realize that after like <laughs> nearly like 300 yards and that like like court, it's like it didn't take him long to realize that. But at that point, it was like, yeah, it's kind of like almost too late. You know what I mean? So, you know, hang back in the zone. Let you under you got great linebackers. You probably got the best inside linebacker core in the league. Hang let let those underneath defenders do that do do their deal. Have you know have them have them have some fire X blitzes come in there to add some pressure to to Mahomes. You know what I mean? You got JPP and Shaq Barrett. They destroy Green Bay, and both of those tackles are going to be better than these tackles that they're going to be facing in Kansas City this year because they're young boys or or guys that don't have much experience. So like, just let them do that yeah. thing. And you know, like you said, Dink and Duck take the little stuff. You know, but don't take a lot of stuff. You know, what I mean, don't take the lot, right. take the little. You know, so. Right. And you look down on the, the receiver line, too. It's like, okay, let's say, you know, with Tyreek Hill, you can't stop him. You can try to contain him. Miko Hardman, another guy who's like top three, top five fastest dudes in the league. Well, even like Sammy Watkins is. Sammy still, Watkins? Like, super, yeah. Just, super just clutch. So many weapons who, if you allow them that big play possibility, mm -hmm. will kill you. Yeah. Will, they, they they will break your back yeah and yeah yeah i mean i i couldn't agree more it's like letting those guys do their thing in open space is a recipe for a or for for an early deficit and you know teams have have shown that like you, you can't really come back against this kansas city team they don't really let you do that and that, that cleveland browns game it's the reason i was so excited to watch that first yeah. divisional round game it's like cleveland seemed to have figured something out oh yeah but you can attribute a lot of their late game success you know, short of them falling short at the end to, um, to Chad Henney coming in. But again, Henney, Henney beat him in the end. Um, but uh, they seem to have figured something out and they managed to stop some of those big plays. But again, it was kind of too late because they got themselves down in the first place. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know, I think if we didn't get your input on this, Mark, as a, as a seasoned professional and a veteran in the entertainment industry, uh, it would be a big, it'd be a big tragedy. So, the halftime show this year is the weekend. Now we've talked about this with some of our other guests. Who's left in the world of music that could possibly slide in there? Because honestly, the weekend I have no beef. I got no issue with. No, the he's weekend. great. Yeah. yeah, talented, talented fella. I yeah. like. He's kind of eccentric. He's doing a character thing. I, I can get into that. Um, even Lady Gaga a few years ago thought she did a great yeah, job. Yeah, dude, you can talented, come from talented the roof individual. Like that. But they're like running out of like premier nostalgia acts and it's like short of metallica who i think i can't i don't understand how you can play enter sandman in every fucking game in every stadium worldwide and then not invite metallica yeah. to play yeah. super bowl yeah um who, who who could you think of that might be a this is our halftime show moment here by the way they're the big one. Metallica is the big one. Like they, they should have played this thing years ago. And right. they're one of these bands. Like I think the key to Super Bowl halftime music, and maybe maybe you guys have differing opinions on this, is like, okay, Lady Gaga, cool. Like not my cup of tea. I think she has some really good songs. Like my wife loves her. Like I hear some of her songs. Dude, paparazzi. Like, yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah. 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 Catchy as shit. Yeah. yeah. But I, I'm only uh, one person, and I think the key to it is to have. A, as as less of a polarizing artist as possible yes which is why when the maroon five tolerable thing happened, yeah when the maroon five th thing happens like you could see that coming a mile away you can see the football fans a mile away being like come on dude i'm boycotting this game i'm done being a football fan this guy's <laughs> way too sexy i can't watch this yeah it's way too many stupid tattoos i'm done <laughs> you steal my eyes <laughs> yeah. um, um but I think that's the key to it, man. And, and, and when, uh, who played it last? So Shakira and J-Lo played it. And I thought that that was cool. Cause it's like, you, you can't hate, like, you know, both of them are, are magnetic, charismatic women and they're, they've dominated the charts for, for decades. And you couldn't even hate on that. Um, I've just so. never thought, like anytime I think of Jennifer Lopez, her as a singer is like the fifth thing I think about. <laughs> as far, like I, I identify her more as an actress you know yeah. what I mean? And that's right, that right. was the only thing where I was kind of like, really? Because I, I can't name a single hit. Like, I think Ricky Martin, like, if you're like, 
she's not as big of a star as like Ricky, a Latin music star as Ricky Martin. She's not a lot as big as Latin. Like Shakira has legitimately been like a platinum yeah. selling artist since she was like 16 in Argentina. Like she's, she's like a singer, you know, but JLo yeah, yeah, is yeah. more of like a dancer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bless her heart. Yeah. Bless her heart. Um, but yeah, I mean, to answer your question, I, I don't know, man. Like you, you said nostalgia act. I think that's what it's all about too. It's like every artist that's played, has that element of nostalgia except for Maroon 5. Um, that was one where it's like, how did they, how did they get to this decision? You know, like, yeah, just, I, I think it was, they had to have been the, like the third pick, I think, because I think that was the, the rumor was that was the year they were trying to get Jay-Z and he was like, nah, I'm not doing it. And then it was like, well, what if we get, uh, and they're like, nope. And then they're like, all right, moving five, you know, let's. And then they got to Kid Rock and he was like, no. <laughs> yeah, Kid, Kid Rock even <laughs> passed, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And then Smash Mouth was like, no, sorry, we got a thing that day. And then. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's funny, speaking of Kid Rock, when I was, uh, as, as you can see here, I'm a big wrestling fan. And uh, a couple of years ago, my fiance and I went to WrestleMania in New Orleans. And uh, New Orleans is a great, great time. And they have the Hall of Fame where they induct like a celebrity wing, you know, celebrity of the wing every year. And that year it was Kid Rock and he was inducted into the, the WWE Hall of Fame the year we were at WrestleMania. And I thought for sure, like, I was like, oh my God, Kid Rock is going to play at WrestleMania and I'm going to be there for it. This is going to be the fucking, this is going to be like <laughs> the pinnacle of entertainment, you know? And sadly, he was double booked and he was only there the day before and he didn't mm. actually make an appearance. Then, well, like, when they bring them all out, I was like, Oh, here he comes! Here he comes! I'm like, my name is, and it just never happened, man. Oh man, I'm so Not sorry for you. Yeah, someday, someday. <laughs> I'll, I'll get um, yeah, I can't. I mean, short of Metallica, I can't think of anybody else who. Uh, um, uh, you too. I don't know. Like, they did. Like well, somebody... they did it back in 2001, yeah. the first Brady Super Bowl. That's right. Okay. Well, yeah, that's that was 20 years ago. So yeah, it's they true. got to bring them back. They're basically different people now. Skin this cells regenerate. They're they're different people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah. I think I've seen that on uh, a couple of different girls' Instagrams about uh, breakups. You know, your 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 fingernails are different. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. We'll we'll see what happens there. So we've gone through the coaches. We've gone through the running backs. We've gone through the halftime entertainment, the intangibles. I think as far as intangibles go here, and everybody can feel free to throw their own out. I think the fact that Tom Brady's wife is uh practices crystal magic i think that is another x what is factor. crystal magic what it was dude and i said this before and i got some flack for it people thought i was full of shit but the i read an interview with her in of in people magazine online and she practices this form of uh spiritual i don't want to i don't know i don't want to mischaracterize it but it's like a spiritual practice involving crystals and meditation and prayer and chanting and and uh also fucking fortune telling mm. yeah it's a little it's it's got a little bit of everything in it but like there's also an interview with tom brady where he's talking to sports illustrated about yeah the year they lost to uh the giants his wife at the beginning of the season was like yeah you're gonna have a great season statistically but like it's not your year sorry honey like you're going to lose the Super Bowl. Like she told him he was going to lose the Super Bowl in like the first week of training camp. And he, he said then he thought it was she was full of shit. And then she did it again the next year when they won. She was like, yeah, this is your year, but you're not going to have as good a year. And they won. And he was like, that's when I start putting it together. And he's made a couple comments about how like her spirituality has kind of influenced some of his like st strategy and decision making. So like I, I in I like to consider all things when I'm making a wild speculation of my own. You know what I mean? What did she What did she say about this Super Bowl? Well, that's what I'm trying to find out. We got to find out. Looking, and I've been looking for. Got to find out. I found myself like looking like Giselle. Like, what is she talking about? You know, like right to the Super Bowl, and she's not saying anything. So, mm. I, I I think I think the crystals are involved somehow. So I'm not ruling it out. Don't really know, you know, it's, but it's definitely, dude, if you look it up, every man, every woman, look it up, Tom Brady, Crystal, wife projections. Okay. WWGS, what would Giselle say? Exactly. What does her crystals, what do oh, her, what yeah. do her crystals say? And I don't think, and the, and the reason I say this is Patrick Mahomes, he's not married yet. His girlfriend, I, as far as I know, is not into crystal time travel or anything like that. So <laughs> that could play a factor in my pick there. So... <laughs> Tampa Bay playing at home 
Tom Brady going for seven. My pick. I'm I'm going with Tampa. Wow. For, for, wow. For, for, the, for the every man, the every woman gamblers out there, Tampa plus three. That just that that speaks to me. It speaks mm. to me. Mm. What say you, Mark? I, th- I think it would be a really cool story for football. An amazing story for football. Just just thinking 10, 15 years down the line. You guys remember when Tom Brady switched teams and then he won seven more Super Bowls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he ended with 14. Yeah. 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 Um, I think it would be a crazy story. Like I'm not I can tell you this. I'm not gonna be bummed out either way. Right. Because I, I think there's a lot of likable things about Kansas City. Just and I, I don't know if you could tell by my language about sports, is like I'm big on sentimentality i'm big on storylines i'm yeah. big on the human aspect of it and there's a lot of likable aspects of both teams uh and to be honest like you know if, if tampa bay won this thing and 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 brady sort of wins the belichick versus brady uh debate like you know who was the who, who was behind the whole thing you know who who gets the, all the credit for all of those years um i i, I wouldn't be too bummed out uh, with that being said I, I, I still am going to go Kansas City with this one. Uh, just I just think that there's so much working in their favor, but I, I don't think it's going to be the blowout or the route that some people are saying. It's like, I, I mean, I've read some opinions. I've heard, I've heard some people say that this is going to be like ugly, you know, like this is going to be no way. No, like, and, and if, and if, and if people out there think that, I think they've watched a lot of early season Tampa Bay. Uh, they yes. did, they haven't really seen how they've come together. Like when the Bears beat Tampa Bay, and, and Tom Brady mm-hmm. forgot how many downs there were, you know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was fourth down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was that four? Yeah. Right, yeah. right. And mm-hmm. you could you could tell they were still ironing some things out. Uh, but if you watch any of their games past pretty much that point in the season, you can see that they've become a, a completely different team. Way more disciplined. Sure, not mistake free, but they play a tight enough of a game with the with that green bay game being the perfect case is like this team can beat you any number of ways and if it's not brady it's like their defense is going to step up and make the plays when they need to and uh and yeah i i I gotta say kansas city maybe by a score you know anywhere from three seven points well i i gotta agree with you i'm gonna go with uh patrick mahomes and uh, andy reed just because they have some something to you know play for you know what i mean i want to see andy reed go back to back and do something that hasn't been done in 17 years i want to see that that's that's a good storyline as well but yeah. um you know it, th- those same you know those same points that you made with respect to tampa bay their defense their team they're playing great complimentary football as well. They're playing off of one another, offensive, defense. If Brady's down, that defense is up. They get the takeaways where, you know, uh, Brady might be throwing the interceptions. You know what I mean? So anytime you have a team that's like right around this time of the year playing at their prime on both on both sides of the ball, it's, it's, it's a scary matchup. It's just that there's so much more. Um, and, and also, too, and, and, you know, some 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 somebody might, Somebody out there might say, you know what? What are you talking about, DC? I don't feel like Brady has anything left to prove at this point. We know he's the GOAT. If it's a hey, is he is he winning that Belichick Brady thing? It's it's Brady all the way. Anytime you can leave one team, that team falls to pieces, goes in shambles, going through multiple quarterbacks, and then he leads another one that hasn't been to the to the ship in God knows how long. Come on, he's he's won it. So no more debate about that, people. He's the greatest of all time. He's the best that ever done. He's didn't he did it? But right now, what I'm looking for in the NFL is I'm looking for the next great quarterback. I'm looking for the next Brady. I'm looking for the next great matchups between quarterbacks. That's that that you know, Peyton Manning is gone. You know, Peyton Manning is gone. Um, we got, you know, we got the Ben Roethlisberger's of the world still hanging in there, you know, hanging around. They're pretty good, solid quarterbacks. But you know what? This young kid and Patrick Mahomes, he just, he, he has that, like, he has that thing, man. He has that thing that can't be quantified and, 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 it's, and it's exciting to see. And he makes you think about like the great quarterbacks, the lore of the great quarterbacks from days old, but when, when Peyton and, 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 and when Peyton and uh, Brady were in their prime and you wanted to, you want to see that. So I'm looking for the next great one. Like Lamar Jackson is good. You know, uh, um, um, the, the other kid in, in, in Houston is good as well. But at the same time, like I'm looking for those next who's I want Brady to hand that torch pass the torch to somebody and then let's just see what that's going to be for football from here on out. That's what I'm looking for. 
And I think Patrick Mahomes has it. And there are a few other quarterbacks that can grow into that role and, and be competition for him. So we can see some exciting football for years to come. So um, I got Mahomes in this um, Brady, whether he wins it or not, it, to, to me, it's, it, we already know who, he's the best. So right. he just have another ring at this point, you know, if, if he does win it, but I want to see, uh, I want to see Kansas City pull, pull this one out. Well said. Agreed. I'll tell you what, tell any of that to Tom Brady. That's all, <laughs> that's all I can say about that, bro. I don't think, I don't think that man has a, has it in him. And, and, uh, you know what, gentlemen, this has been fantastic. Mark, where can everybody keep up with you, uh, on, on, uh, social media and everything with, with going on with periphery and, uh, haunted shores. Follow me on parlor clubhouse, uh, Vero. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Friendster and um, are you on Orc Cut? One? Remember Grindr. that? Orc? Grinder, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're big, oh. we have a big presence there. Yeah. Do you have an OnlyFans page, Mark? OnlyFans as well. Yeah, you know, we're talking about oh, I'm we're talking it. about spinning off in every man only fans. <laughs> every man only fans. It'll be great. Uh, Mark, <laughs> my brother, honestly, man, love having you on the show. Love talking football with you, man. Be good, and uh, we hope everybody has an awesome Super Bowl weekend. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube for the first time, thank you for checking us out. Subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment, do the whole thing, alerts, you know the drill. And uh, we'll see you guys down the block. Thanks, guys.